today our topic of discussion is very important it is pulmonary embolism in pregnancy this is not a common clinical problem but pulmonary embolism is a serious clinical condition that can result in serious consequences if not timely intervened and diagnosed the diagnosis of pulmonary embolism in pregnancy is difficult because of a number of reasons because the patient is often anemic and the patient can can have exacerbation of the previous illnesses if the patient is suffering from those and apart from uh, in addition to that the patient may have other disorders like eclampsia and preeclampsia but pulmonary embolism diagnosis in pregnancy can not only save the life of a mother but also the baby so the diagnosis of pulmonary embolism not only in pregnancy but in other conditions is actually a diagnosis of exclusion but remember that pulmonary embolism should not be missed in a patient because this can lead to serious consequences and the patient may, he may have uh, as a life-threatening uh, outcome in the context of this pulmonary embolism. So pulmonary embolism in pregnancy can be easily diagnosed if you first focus on the clinical history. The clinical history of the patient is very very important. For example, if a patient is having no previous illness in the pregnancy, for example if the patient is having no uh, the uh, hypertension, the patient is having no diabetes, the patient is having no ischemic heart disease, the patient is having no valvular or rheumatic heart disease, and the patient is having no other con concomitant illnesses of the respiratory system like COPD or bronchial asthma or some other conditions which can cause exacerbation in the pregnancy. So if the patient is having no clinical history of other disorders, and the patient is suffering from a short history of progressive or exertional shortness of breath that is very consistent um, in, 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 in the context of pulmonary embolism. Similarly, apart from the, uh, the lack of the comorbidities, the patient previous comorbidities or clinical conditions may be exacerbated by the pulmonary embolism. For example, a patient who is having bronchial asthma can be exacerbated by the pulmonary embolism. Similarly, patient valvular heart disease may be exacerbated by the pulmonary embolism. One important point which is which must be kept in mind that pulmonary embolism can present in the form of crackles, wheezes, and even bronchial breathing when there is infarction of the the lung parenchyma. So just uh, ascultating the chest and listening to the chest and then saying that the patient is having uh, wheezes so that exclude the pulmonary embolism can have a serious consequences because the pulmonary embolism is, is mixed. For example, if the clinical history of the patient is consistent, no previous history, short history of progressive, shortness, short history of, shortness, short history of uh, exertional dyspnea or dyspnea at rest with no fewer, no focus of infection, so the clinical suspicion must be high. Again, if the patient pregnancy is advanced, advanced pregnancy, the clinical suspicion must be high. A patient having pedal edema, the clinical suspicion must be high. So, if the clinical suspicion is high, then the next step is to look for the leg swellings. Look for the legs, swellings or symptoms if they are present yes what are the leg symptoms basically there is redness tenderness swelling of the calf muscles you can you you should not but there may be the positive woman sign and the patient could have asymmetric swelling of the legs which is very important because sometimes the swelling is minimal and can easily be missed so a swelling a, a, a difference of girth in the calf muscles which is taken from the tibial tuberosity of 2 cm is considered important and clinically relevant. So if the patient has leg symptoms, the next step is to go for the compression ultrasound. So this compression ultrasound will tell whether the patient is having uh, a non-compressible portion of the, the, the popliteal vein, femoral vein and some other vein or not. If that is present, if that is present, this indicates that the patient has got 
evidence of deep venous thrombosis. So the patient needs to be treated because the treatment of DVT and pulmonary embolism is the same. The patient needs to be treated for the pulmonary embolism because this is the DVT which can give rise to the pulmonary embolism. Again, DVT needs to be treated because this is this is lethal in the context of pulmonary embolism. If the leg symptoms are absent, they are absent, they are not present, or if the compression ultrasound is negative. If this is negative, if the compression ultrasound is showing no evidence of the, um, uh, the, the, the non-compressible part of the femoral or the popliteal vein, no evidence of the DVT, or if the patient leg symptoms are not present, the next step is to give the chest x-ray of the patient down. Get it done and look for the abnormalities. If the chest x-ray shows abnormalities, abnormalities, if the chest x-ray of the patient shows abnormalities, so what are the abnormalities which can be seen in case of pulmonary embolism? So there are a number of abnormalities which can be seen in pulmonary embolism but in majority of the cases the patient chest x-ray is fine that is normal so one abnormality if this artery is blocked the the feeding area is having less vessels and more air so this is called focal oligemia focal oligemia focal oligemia is because these are vessels scanty vessels and more vessels as compared to the other side so this is focal oligemia, which is called the Western mark sign. Western mark sign. This is called the Western mark sign. Another important abnormality which can be seen a patient who is having pulmonary embolism is the peripheral width shaft opacity. This is called the Hampton hum sign. The Hampton hum sign. The patient could have dilated descending right pulmonary artery. This is a dilated descending pulmonary artery. This is called the Pala sign. P A W A Pala sign. The patient could have just evidence of minimal pleural effusion. Look at this. This CP angle is blunted. So the minimal pleural effusion may be seen in case of pulmonary embolism. Or the patient may have linear atelectasis. This, this indicates linear atelectasis. So these features may be present or they may be absent in a patient who is having pulmonary embolism. So if the chest x-ray shows abnormalities, any of these or a combination of these, you must go for the CTPA. The CTPA must be carried out. If the CTPA shows that this patient has evidence of pulmonary embolism, filling the fact in the pulmonary arteries, the patient needs to be treated for pulmonary embolism again. If this shows that there is no evidence of filling defect in the CTP in the pulmonary vessels. The patient history must be reviewed and an alternative diagnosis must be looked for because the X-ray abnormalities are not without any reason. If that is not indicative of the pulmonary the CTP, that shows that the patient may have an alternative diagnosis. For example, the patient may have an acute infection. For example, this which opacity may be caused by the eosinophilic pneumonia, or it could be drug induced, or it could be having an infective etiology like bacterial viral, right? Or the patient may have some other abnormality. So, if the patient chest X ray is normal, so what is the next step? In case the patient chest X ray is abnormal, this is the protocol. If the patient chest X ray is normal, what is the next step? But the clinical suspicion is very high. The clinical suspicion for pulmonary embolism is very high in the context of normal chest X-ray. The next step is to give the ventilation perfusion scan. This ventilation perfusion scan should be done in a patient whose history is very consistent with the diagnosis of pulmonary embolism, but the chest X-ray is normal. So the ventilation perfusion scan measure two abnormalities. This shows evidence of pulmonary embolism. Yes treat the patient for pulmonary embolism. No, there is no evidence of pulmonary embolism. So the patient history must be reviewed and alternative diagnosis must be looked for. There is another important point that if the clinical suspicion of the patient for pulmonary embolism is high, the x-ray is normal and the ventilation perfusion scan is 
non diagnostic if this is non diagnostic again you have to move for the treat for the cdpi if the cdpi is showing evidence of pulmonary embolism treat the patient if the patient is cdpi is showing no evidence of pulmonary embolism review the patient and look for the other alternative diagnosis which may mimic pulmonary embolism there is one important point which is noteworthy look at this diagram in this diagram there is no question of the d dimers there is no question of the d dimers in this diagram so the clinical suspicion the clinical history and examination for pulmonary embolism is not based on the d dimers and especially in a pregnant lady who has a lot of wear and tear in the body because of pregnancy the d dimers have nothing to do with the diagnosis of the pulmonary embolism so d dimers should not be taken as a sole indicator of pulmonary embolism or a sole indicator that if this is not elevated the patient doesn't have any pulmonary embolism this should be evaluated in the clinical context and is very important because this is very very important thing that needs urgent management and can have a very good outcome and if it is missed the patient can lose the life along with his baby thank you very much